everybody, Captain Al speaking with your time training tips and 10 ticks targeted to teaching technical type transport travel through tailored tiny takeaways. Uh, the question for today, episode four, part three, what does a non-normal procedure look like on the electronic checklist or ECL? Today we get airborne on the Boeing 747-8. Let's go to the virtual simulator and take a look. We're in the virtual simulator for the 747-8 uh, and we're talking about the electronic checklist. This is part three where we're going to get airborne. Uh, temperature's been dropping all morning. It's uh, currently 8 Celsius. We've got visible moisture so we've got the engine anti-ice on. We've got uh, light to moderate uh, precipitation at uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So we're going to take off and we're going to do a uh, non-normal and describe the use of the checklist during the non-normal. So let's go ahead and take off. We'll go to 45% N1. Stabilize, we'll push toga. And off we go. Looks like there's some areas of uh, heavier precipitation as well. 80 knots. V1. Rotate. Now we'll go gear up. Now we'll get the autopilot on. And you can see just after we're airborne, we, the temperature uh, is 8 degrees Celsius on the ground. We got airborne here and we're at uh, 15 degrees Celsius now. So a little bit of an inversion there. We'll go flaps 5. And the reason we're getting that anti-ice message is because the temperature is uh, greater than plus 12. And we've got the engine anti-ice on. And once we retract the flaps, that's usually where we go back to auto with the engine anti-ice. So we'll leave it on for the time being. And here comes flaps up. And this is where we can go back upstairs now and turn the engine anti-ice back to auto. And then you notice that message goes away now. And we don't have the EAI anymore here at N1. And we can now do our after takeoff uh, checklist. So let's bring the uh, checklist up. Now let's go to checklist. And you notice after takeout checklist is complete. So when we do this in the airplane, we just say after takeout checklist is complete. He doesn't have to verify it. I mean, he'll look at it, but he doesn't have to say anything. He doesn't have to say checklist complete. It's just the FO uh, bringing this up. And notice these are two closed loop items. So they checked off automatically. And all we would say is after takeout checklist complete. And then we go ahead and store the checklist. Don't, do not have to read the items. Okay, we'll be back at uh, 10,000 feet to do a non-normal. 
Okay, we're back. We uh, climbed to uh, flight level 200 to get above uh, most of the weather. The uh, tops seem to be right around uh, 15,000 feet. There's some areas of uh, higher tops. And it looks like some moderate to heavier rain with uh, some small thunderstorm development. We're just flying around the Minneapolis area. And we're going to put in a non-normal now. So we'll go to the uh, menu page and we'll go to PMDG setup. We'll go to aircraft. We'll go to failures. And let's select, um, let's select uh, air conditioning. And we'll go to programmed. And we'll go to a uh, pack one overheat. And we'll make that active. And we'll execute that. And so that'll create a pack overheat. We should get an ICAS uh, message for that. Should be a checklist item. So you're going to get a white icon in front of the uh, pack one message. And now that would indicate there's a checklist procedure for that. If you do not get a uh, checklist icon, then that would simply mean that that procedure, um, or that item, has no procedure to it, or no checklist to it. So that would be the same thing in the 400 as a carotid prompt. A carotid prompt in the 400 means that it's just a um, you could go to the checklist and look it up and it would have a condition to it, but it would have no pilot procedural items associated with it. Uh, but you can notice in this case with the PAC-1 message that we have a uh, white icon and that means that there is an electronic checklist procedure with procedural steps to it that we have to accomplish. So let's go to the uh, checklist. Let's bring it uh, expanded out here. Go to the checklist. When you push checklist, it should come up with the non-normal checklist for pack one. So we bring it up and it says pack one. We match the uh, that message with that message. And it says condition. One of these occurs, a pack one controller fault a PAC-1 operation fault, or a PAC-1 overheat. And notice the first item says, wait two minutes. This allows time for an overheat condition to cool. This is going to be a uh, open loop item, so we're going to have to check it off. Notice also one of the advantages of an electronic checklist is you don't have to time. Many things that are timed are done for you. And so this will count down until zero, and then it will turn amber when it gets to zero. Once against a zero, then we'll go ahead and uh, check that off. So we'll come back once it's at uh, zero, or close to zero. Okay, we're close to a zero, or it's coming five seconds left. And notice it turns amber. And then that means that we can go ahead and check that off now. So we'll go ahead and check that off. Wait two minutes. The next step is a closed loop item. It says pack reset switch push and hold for one second. So we'll go up to the pack reset switch and we'll push and hold that for one second. And then when we do that, that's completed. It's true that we did that. The airplane senses it, moves to the next item, which is wait two minutes. Clock is counting down again. And we'll wait for two minutes, and then we'll come back shortly before the uh, time expires. Okay, we're back uh, 10 seconds uh, left in the process here. And again, we'll check that off once we reach uh, the completion of two minutes. It's going to turn amber, and then we can check that off. And now it says you've got a uh, what's called a conditional um, checklist item because it's based on a condition. We have to tell it what the condition is. Is it this or is it this? And once you tell it what the condition is, then it will do the appropriate thing regarding the checklist. So in this case, it's asking us, is the PAC-1 message shows or is it shown? 
And in this case, you can see on the ICAS that it is still there. So pushing the reset switch and holding for one second did not solve our problem. So it says pack one message shows. Yes, it's still there. So we're going to go ahead and move the cursor to the right. And we're going to say, yes, it is shown. And now it goes down, the cursor moves down here to give us the next step, which is to turn the pack one switch off. And so we'll go up to the overhead panel and we'll turn the pack one switch to off. This is a closed loop item, so as soon as we turn it off, it'll sense that to be true, and then that will complete the checklist. You'll notice that uh, there are some notes down here, and I did that just so you can see the notes uh, aspect of this. Um, I tried, before I tried this non normal, I tried a hydraulic system 3 non normal, and it uh, just didn't react properly on the electronic checklist. That's the problem with PNVG. Uh, sometimes things work and sometimes they are they don't work as they should. And uh, so I ended up going using this checklist instead. But if we go to the notes here, because I had some notes from the hydraulic pressure system three, and those notes remained. And so anytime you have a procedure that incorporates notes, uh, they will stay so that you can review them as part of the normal checklist because when you go to the descent checklist you'll notice notes checked as part of the descent checklist so you're going to have to come down and check if you haven't reviewed them you're going to have to review these for landing uh, and when you go to notes now they will have the operational notes that you should note for, for landing and in this case, because I had the hydraulic pressure system 3 message in there, it has a speed brake auto. Note, do not arm the speed brake. This prevents inadvertent in-flight extension. Note, and then there were spoilers notes as well. So these notes were um, left over from that hydraulic pressure system 3 message, but I wanted to show you what the, um, what the notes uh, looked like um, down here. And this is where they show up when you uh, have notes from a previous procedure. That completes the uh, session on the electronic checklist, part one, two, and three. Thanks for watching.